What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to model out a backyard landscape inside of SketchUp. So we'll talk about different things like how to organize the model and we'll talk about some other things that you might find helpful when working with landscapes in SketchUp. Um, one thing to note, if you are looking for more detailed SketchUp instruction, you can check out the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to really get in depth on how to use SketchUp. So if you are looking for some more in-depth instruction, I will link to that in the notes down below, or you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, you're gonna notice that I've already modeled the placeholder house, and I've kind of set the grade for the backyard. And I'm assuming for right now that this is gonna be fairly flat. There's some stuff we could do with walls and other things like that that I'm not gonna worry about too much for right now. But I've also kind of roughed out what the pad might be or the area that we're working with so that I don't have to come back in and figure that out later. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by modeling out the back patio. Um, and I'm assuming this is going to be some kind of a concrete patio that comes off of this building. So notice how I've modeled the ground lower than the patio so that I can come in here and I can actually work with that. One thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to group the geometry at the base of the house um, just so that it's still there and we're not making like weird hollow issues or anything like that. We're going to model outside of that. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that we're going to have some kind of a pad that comes off of our building, maybe something like 10 feet. So I'm just going to draw a 10 foot line right here, then I'll draw a line over across so that I've got this pad that I can extrude up. And so when I have this pad created, what I can do is I can just push pull that up using the push pull tool. So then we can come in here and you could either add materials as you go, you could also add the materials after the fact. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add materials because this is just going to be a simple concrete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some steps in here. And I'm assuming we're probably not going to want to form out concrete steps all the way across here. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to model some steps coming off of this side. And so I'm assuming that this is probably going to be three or four steps. So let's say maybe four. So what you can do is you can right click on this edge right here and click on the option for divide. Notice how when you move your mouse, this is going to give you a number of segments. So I can use that in order to split this up. So notice how I divided that into four segments and then however wide my stair is going to be, let's go ahead and call it 15 feet, I can just break this up by doing that. So I'm just going to draw a line in here and then I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm going to select these, um, tap the M key and then tap control and then I'm just going to make a copy here. I'm going to type in times three and hit the enter key. Well now I'm ready to model out these stairs. And so I'm assuming, I'm gonna start with my bottom stair. And I'm assuming my bottom stair is gonna come out something like four feet. So I'm gonna type in a value of four feet, hit the enter key. And I'm assuming this one is gonna come out three foot six. And so then I'm assuming this one is gonna come out three feet. This one is gonna come out two feet. And then we can say that this is going to step out and that's going to come out one foot. So what that's done is that's just given us our concrete steps right here. Well, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to triple click and I should have grouped this to begin with, but that's okay. Um, and I'm just going to do a shift double click over here. And then I'm going to pick up these bottom edges. And what I want to do is I want to separate my concrete into a group. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, right click on it and make it a group. So now I've got my concrete patio coming off the back here. And so now I am assuming that this is going to have some kind of a stone area out here, maybe with a pergola. So what we want to do is we want to model out the extents of that stone area. And so I'm just going to use the arc tool in order to do this. And I'm just going to draw kind of a curving path out into my yard. So maybe something like this. And I'm just using the arc tool in order to do this. So what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna, just gonna allow me to do this kind of like smoothly curving area right here. And so my assumption is that this is gonna be made up of some kind of a stone material. Probably what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna use a texture in order to define it. I don't really wanna model out the individual stones because it's just not a very good use of my time. And so one other thing is I'm assuming I might have some kind of a like brick edge around the outside. And so I'm just gonna offset this out. Maybe we'll offset it out something like four inches. 
So something that gives me just a little bit of thickness right here. But then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna double click, right click and group this. Then I'll double click, right click, and I'll group this. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my geometry from all merging together, which is why I'm grouping things. But now I'm just gonna drop into my landscaping and I'm just going to find maybe like this modular brick pavers and put that down for right now. And if we need to go looking for another material that matches more closely, we can do that. But I think this is gonna be okay for what we're doing here. And then I'm just gonna go into my edit and I'm just gonna make this maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna type in a value of four feet for the size under the edit tab in order to make that texture bigger. And then we can go ahead and we can apply something We'll just call this the stamp brick. The problem with this is this gets a little bit tricky with trying to get your brick to line up the way that you want in here. I'm not gonna get too far into that right now. There's some advanced things you could do with mapping, but I'm not gonna worry about that for this tutorial. So we've got that kind of figured out. Now let's assume that we're gonna have some kind of a planting bed on the outside over here. So we're just gonna do the same thing where we're just gonna arc this out, something like this. And then we may model out like a little wall or a fountain or something like that. We'll just kind of see where this takes us. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing over here where I'm gonna offset this in by four inches. And probably on the end here, I'm just gonna draw an edge over to this wall. I'm gonna erase out these edges. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to close this in so that I can apply that brick material again. So go ahead and do that. We'll double click and make that a group. And this, we'll use the mulch material. So we're gonna go find a mulch material in here. Maybe this ground cover wood mix. We'll put that right here. And again, because this is tiling, I like to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make that four feet. You can see how that just looks better in our overall view. And I'm just gonna double click. I'm gonna make that a group. And then let's go ahead and let's model out a little fountain over here just for fun. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle over here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push pull that up right here. I'm gonna offset it in using the offset tool. And we'll maybe we'll make this more of a stone planner is what we'll do instead of a fountain. So I'm assuming this is gonna have multiple levels in here. So all I'm doing So I'm just modeling out the next level, and I'm assuming that this is also gonna have a thickness of eight inches. So you can see how I offset this out, and then I'm just gonna come in here, and I'm going to push-pull this up. We can call that another 24 inches for right now. We can go ahead and push-pull this back wall as well. And so now, I'm assuming that I'm gonna have a little bit of a cap on these. So the way that I'm gonna do the cap is I'm just going to take this whole thing, I'm just gonna offset it out again. And in this case, I'm assuming the cap's gonna hang out maybe like an extra two inches. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the control key in order to go into create new face mode. I'm gonna push pull this up by maybe a thickness of two inches. So see how I did the same thing over here? And so then from here, I can just erase out these extra edges. And then I can come in here and I can apply my materials. So I'm gonna apply probably some kind of a stone material, maybe the stone masonry to my vertical walls like this. And then maybe some sort of a sandstone I'll probably go down into my actual stone materials for this, but I'm just gonna find a sandstone for my cap, like this. And then there's some extra edges in here that you can kind of clean up. So I'm gonna push pull this up on the inside of the planner. One thing I probably should have done that I didn't do again was group these. But in this case, it's not that big of a deal because what I can do is I can come in here and pick those up really fast using the select by material tool. So I can just come in here and right click and I can click on select all, 
with the same material. That's gonna go find all of the faces with the same material in them, and then I can just group them together. So then I could do the same thing with my sandstone. So I could just apply materials to the inside and the outside. And what I could do is I could just right click, select all with same material. Since I don't have this anywhere else in my model, I can just group that as well. So that way my caps are gonna be in different groups than my walls. And then I can just apply this bark material or ground cover material over here. And so then from here, um, there's a lot of different steps that you could take. Probably what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna apply a grass material. So I'm just gonna go into my landscape we can find a grass material that we like. And again, you can adjust the sizing if you want to get less tiling in there. But now we've got this pretty much roughed out, right? There's a couple things we probably still need to do. So we wanna model out a pergola over here and we wanna model our perimeter fence. And so I'm gonna model the perimeter fence first. And what I'm gonna do in order to make this fairly simple is I'm actually going to model this out using the follow me tool. And one thing we probably wanna do is we wanna go ahead and group this as well. But if you remember the follow me tool allows you to extrude a profile along a length. Well, all a fence is is a bunch of two by sixes applied to a length. So what I can do and if you want to model like some complicated things with gates and stuff, you may need to modify this method a little bit. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to model out a two by six. So I'm going to model this at five and a half tall, one and a half wide. It's like this. So what I've done is I've created a profile, right? It's just a face that's in here. Well, now I'm going to select the edge around the perimeter. Then I'm gonna activate the follow me tool and click on this edge. And this is why it's important that you group everything because you don't want this geometry merging with uh, your ground right here. But now I can just come in here and triple click. I can just make that a component and I can call that fence board row like this. Now. I can move that up off the ground, whatever the fence would actually be. So maybe that would be, call it an inch off the ground for right now. But then we can assume there's gonna be copies of this. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode in order to create that. And I'm not sure what the gap on a fence would be. Um, so I might move this up with maybe like a half inch gap. So I'm just gonna type in a value of six and then However tall I want this to be, that's how many copies I'm gonna create. It might be easier just to create too many and then delete some out. So I'm gonna type in times 10 or times 12 for right now. That might actually be about the right height. So we're gonna say that fence, I'm good with a height of six foot, six and a half inches. So what we've got now is we've got our fence in here ready to go. And one of the things that I did wrong in here is I modeled this over my property line. So probably what I can do in this situation, um, because nothing's merged or anything like that, is I can just move this over so that it aligns with the inside of my fence. So that's part of the reason you wanna group everything so you don't have that geometry like merged to itself, so it's really hard to do. I'm just gonna move that over like this, and then that looks fine. So I've got my exterior fence and probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, double click into one of these and I'm just gonna apply a wood material. So in this case, I'm not really a fan of any of these for what we're trying to do, but let's say that we maybe apply this wood veneer one, but then I'm gonna go into my colors. I'm gonna click colorize. I'm just gonna color this to more of like a blonde yellow wood. So you can see I can really quickly adjust this if I decide that I wanna do that. I think that's gonna be good enough for right now. The other thing you could do while you're in here is you could go ahead and model out your posts. And notice how I only modeled the back side of this house, not the front. That's because really the only thing I'm focusing on in this video is the back side of the house. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw my posts in here. So I'm assuming this post might be a four by four wood post. So I'm just gonna type in, I think the dimensions are three and a half by three and a half. 
but I'm just gonna model out a post like this on the back side of my fence. So I'll just extrude this up. I'll make this a component and we'll call it fence vertical post. And I'm just gonna start using the move tool in copy mode in order to place these posts. So notice how doing that is really easy. I'm not 100% sure how they would handle the post in the corner, so I'm just gonna cheat a little bit right here. But then we're assuming these posts are gonna be maybe eight foot on center. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and create a copy eight feet from this one. And I'll type in a value of times 15 or times 10, maybe times 11 and hit the enter key. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here then I'll just type in a value of something like divided by 10, whoops, and hit the enter key. So that's gonna get us close enough for right here. It might be divided by 11, and these might be spaced a little bit closer together. But for what we're doing here, this ought to work just fine. So then we'll do the same thing over here. And then we can come in here and we can add a wood material to this object. So I'm not sure if we really have like a rough sawn wood look in here. We might take this wood OSB and then darken it up. Eh, I'm not the world's biggest fan of that. Uh, maybe we'll apply this cork board and we'll make it a little darker. That ought to work for what we're doing right here. Um, we could come in and find another wood material depending on how realistic you wanted to be with this. But for right now, let's go ahead and call this good. All right, so part two of this video will come out next week. In the meantime, if you're looking for some more videos about landscaping and SketchUp, I will link to that up above. I will also link to a video about editing materials um, so you can check out how to create those custom materials inside of SketchUp. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.